Hey kids, it's England Teen here, and for Throwback Thursdays, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to go to random issues. I'm just going to do a history of comic books and share with you a passion I have for the history of our uh, hobby, our, our the favorite medium. Now, for the longest time, it was thought that the Yellow Kid, which was a reprinting of a whole bunch of magazine cartoons was the oldest known comic book. However, there have been more and more discoveries of a new age of comics. These comics are set in the Victorian age, and I don't know if that's going to be official or not, the, calling it the Victorian age, but these are much older than the Yellow Kid. And so what we have here is the adventures of M. Ob Mr. Obadiah Oldbuck. The earliest known comic at the time of this recording is The Adventures of Mr. Obadiah Oldbuck. Now, it was first printed in Europe in 1837, but then it was reprinted in New York on September 14, 1842 for Americans, making it the first comic book printed in America. It was 40 pages long and it measure, measured a very familiar 8.5 by 11 inches. And it was a stitched book. Now, I don't know if kids today know uh, have ever seen stitched books. I remember seeing them when I was a kid, but they have disappeared. And there were no word balloons because the story was told underneath the pictures. And it was done by a man named Rudolf Topfer. It's uh, from Switzerland, so if I mess that up, I apologize. And in Europe, he's the guy who is co considered as the creator of the picture story. He created the comic strip in 1827. He wrote uh, quite a few successful graphic novels, some that even had English translations. So his book remained in print until 1877. Now, the thing about the Victorian age comics is there's new ones being discovered all the time. And this might not even be the earliest, but this is just the earliest right now. So it's really exciting to see all this new stuff come forward. The Brownies first appeared in 1883 and were created by a guy named Palmer Cox for a children's magazine called St. Nicholas. Like Obadiah Oldbuck, the story was told with the pictures and then the text beside it. The Brownies are, at this point, known as the first internationally successful American comic book. It's one of the first ones to be play, to have all the uh, collection put into book form and sold internationally. It was transferred into other mediums, such as plays and book form, as I said before. And it's with this success that we start to see other magazines use uh, picture stories because they were getting more and more popular. Harper's, uh, Life, uh, Truth, stuff like that. Newspapers wanted to compete in this new medium, but they found they couldn't get the popular artists, the, the better artists, because the magazines were sucking them up so quickly. Well, the story goes that a man named Roy L. McArdle told Moral Goddard, who was the Sunday editor of the New York World at the time, that was the largest newspaper, that he knew somebody who could provide something. And that somebody was Richard F. Outcult, who did a picture of street children in the June 2nd, 1894 edition of The Truth. You could, and I've got the picture showing right now. You could see the yellow kid off to the right there, and at the bottom, there was a caption that said, Feudal pride in Hogan's Alley. Little Rosalie McGraw. No, we won't come and play with you. Delia Costigan, our reduced means made temporary necessitate our residing in a rear tenement, but we're just as exclusive as when we lived on the first floor front and Papa had charge of a pound in the Department of Canine Captivity. Don't ask me why I hear an Irish accent when I read that, I just do. And I know that was a really bad Irish accent. Apologies to the Irish. Please don't hate me. There is no way you can overstate the importance of Siegel and Schuster to the comic book medium. That being said, one of the unsung heroes of our hobby is Richard F. Alcolt, who was able to take a look at New York in the same way that the residents themselves saw it. And he was able to depict it in his pictures, the Hogan's Alley, and make people laugh about their own lives. And he became the father of the American comic strip. Without him, no yellow kid. Without the yellow kid, no Superman. But more about the Yellow Kid next week when we move from the Victorian age on to the Platinum Age of comic book history. 
So there you go, kids. That's a little bit of comic book history. And what did you think? Did you like this video? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. So this is the kind of thing I like to do on the Patreon page. Thursdays are going to be the history of comics. Friday is first appearances. Sunday is the Super Team Sundays. I'm trying to come up with other themed ideas for the other days. And just a dollar gets you the, the patron-only content like this. Uh, tell me, would you like this kind of thing on this page more often? Let me know about that. Would you be willing to watch it? All? Of course, always views is what really tells the story. So please share, share, share. And uh, yeah, I hope you like this because I love doing this kind of thing. I, I am a bit of a comic book historian and I love to share because it's more than just capes and cowls. It's more than just SJW Marvel sucks. There's so much more to this medium that we tend to be ignoring when we're talking about what we hate about it. There's so much to love about it. And so this, there's a rich history in this medium as well. And I love to share that. So anyway, once again, click like, click share, subscribe if you haven't, hit that uh, notification bell. Thank you to our patrons, the gentleman who preferred to be anonymous, Jesse Novacek, Sky Rose, Boom, Patriot Cat, thank you very much for your help. And to everybody who takes the time to view our videos, thank you very, very much for watching.